A very nice geometry that comes with Desproto as a free sample is the Desproto picture frame. In this video we'll show you how to machine a nice uh, picture frame in wood using the powerful Desproto wizards. OK, we can select the wizard from the start screen that pops up automatically when we start Desproto. I want to open it in the samples folder which will be easy later on. Here I have my wizard uh, dialog. It is a number of tab pages, each with a different uh, uh, set of questions. For each question I have a tooltip that explains a bit more and when I still don't see, don't have enough information I can open the help system for more information on that wizard page. OK, for now we'll start the basic 3D wizard and the first thing I need to do in this next wizard dialog is to browse a geometry. As said, the, uh, the Desproto opened the samples folder. If not, I can check it here on the left side of my file open dialog. And one of the free samples, as said, is the picture frame. Note that when you, you, when you work in inches, you will need to select the different one. For now, I just say open. It loads the geometry. Here's my picture frame. Here are the dimensions. And here is the wizard page to continue. This one gives me two options, scaling and orientation. Orientation is uh, not, I need, don't need to change it here, as in this, on the machine, your cutter will come from the positive Z direction, so as it's lying flat here, the orientation is perfect for machining. Scaling, I won't do any scaling here, but if you want, you can scale your picture frame to match any picture that you might have, but for this test, these uh, current dimensions are OK, so I'll proceed to the next wizard page. Materials and supports, and most important here is dimensions of the block, as I want to make a small change there. Uh, normally Desproto takes the bounding box of the geometry as the material block, but as my slab of wood that I want to use is a bit thicker, I want to make the block in Desproto thicker as well, because when later on I will use layers to uh, machine away the wood, I want the layers to start at the top of the real material, and my real material block is not uh, 14 millimeters as said here. I go to a front view, my real material block is 18 millimeters thick. So when I say apply, you'll see the block is a bit thicker and now later on my roughing toolpath will be okay. I don't need supports, I will uh, fixture my material using a few screws from uh, below. I'll show that later on, so no supports for now. Workpiece zero point is default here on the left front top corner, yeah, the blue uh, orientator, which is okay as well. I don't want to change that. So again, I can continue to the next page, which, which is roughing. Those three pages here, roughing, finishing, and a smoothing contour. Roughing is optional but I want to use roughing, so i leave it checked. Uh, a ball nose cutter of 6 millimeters. that's exactly the one I want to use for roughing, and I do, need, do not need as many toolpaths here, this will be okay for uh, toolpath distance for roughing. Uh, feed rate and spindle speed are okay as they are, uh, default, uh, for this machine I cannot set the spindle speed here, I need to do it on the machine. Uh, strategy, that's an important one for here. Normally this block strategy is great for roughing, but not for this geometry, as then in the center, after the first series of toolpath, when the cutter is machining the last layer, a solid wooden block will remain in the center, which might damage my part, so I want to use a different strategy and just simply use parallel toolpath for roughing. Skin thickness is okay, a thin layer of material all around the uh, model to be removed during finishing. I don't want to cut her 
to remove two, 12 and a half millimeters material at the same time about five will be okay so let's see what happens I can use this button to calculate the toolpath and see what happens so my cutter goes down in four layers not completely correct here are two layers very close to one another so I will make my uh, layer thickness a bit larger a bit more five and a half millimeters let's see what happens now and again calculations yes now it's good now it's four different layers and I'm all done for roughing okay next page is for the finishing I can't skip that finishing is needed I want to do that with a small with a smaller cutter for all details and I want to use a two millimeter ball nose cutter two millimeter diameter ball nose cutter uh, a bit rougher again five toolpath per millimeter will be okay uh, well continue that's okay and the roughing the, the smoothing contour will add an extra toolpath all around to smooth all staircase effects that might be uh, left over after finishing okay this is the final screen of the wizard I say calculate and it calculates all operations that had not yet been done and I can now write an NC program file however I want to make a few more changes so I won't do that here I uh, finish the uh, wizard after pointing out here the estimated machining time of about uh, four and a half hours okay here are all my toolpath it's a bit many toolpath at the same time so I'll use these lamps to disable to make uh, disable the operation to make them invisible the first is the roughing toolpath as said it said it goes down in one two three four different layers to remove all my material a large toolpath distance to remove the material efficiently here's my finishing operation and the third one is the smoothing contour let me make a top view as said it's one contour all around the inside and the outside around the uh, outer contours of the geometry to make it nice and smooth however I'm not quite happy with this finishing as you can see the complete center area of the uh, model where no material is present will be finished I want to make that a bit more efficient so I open the operation parameters of the finishing operation and there is an option called skip ambient which is already used but it ignores the inner areas the enclosed ambient like the area inside of this picture frame however when I also skip that area you will see toolpaths are automatically recalculated that it doesn't help much as with these parallel toolpath the cutter will travel from the left to the right anyway so I can best use a different strategy for this operation here are the strategies and for this one I will use the radial strategy and you can see here with these toolpath that the complete inner area might be skipped I'll just say enter and you will see what happens the inner area will be skipped and these are the most efficient toolpath however I forgot to check one option as here these four corners are not machined back to the operation parameters strategy tab and for radial I have to say that the corners also need to be machined and here we are so let's zoom in a bit you see the toolpath are radial uh, like ready centered on this center point of the uh, picture frame okay all toolpaths have been calculated I again make roughing and contour line uh, visible here we are um, what I finally do is I write the NC program file to be used uh, on a milling machine to be sent to the milling machine I'll save it on the desktop for now I will call it a test frame no, that was not correct test frame 
again not correct and you can see that two different files are saved when I open this save as dialog again you can see the test frame with the wrong uh, caps lock button a small roughing file is made and a big one with the other two operations the reason for that is um, that the uh, uh, that two different cutters are used and my uh, milling machine doesn't have an automatic tool changer so Desproto is forced to uh, save two different NC program files. Okay, we're all set. I can close uh, Desproto. No, I can save it as test and press save and now we are ready to go with these files and uh, send them to the milling machine. Okay, let's start our preparations. I have this piece of red cedar wood, 14 by 19 by 2 centimeters, and I screwed onto a slab of wasteboard using four screws. Here, one, two, three, here you can see them. Just plain simple wood screws screwed on top. The wasteboard can be wasted as my bullnose cutter will go below the bottom of my picture frame. The screws obviously need to be, may not be in the center of the wood. There will be the hole in the picture frame. So that wasteboard now can be clamped onto my machine and we can start machining. Okay, the wasteboard has been fixtured on the machine and the wood on top of it, obviously. I've set the workpiece zero point on the corner of my wood block, exactly 18 millimeters above the bottom of the wood block. And as you can see, the fixturing clamps are nicely far off so that the cutter won't come any near these. All has been set so we can start machining.
and here we can see the results. A great picture frame, a seven red cedar wood. You can clearly see the grain of the wood. In my idea, it's an absolutely beautiful uh, result. And when we combine that here with the picture of a beautiful young lady, and we put it here on the table, well, the result is an absolutely fabulous gift to any family member of this young lady.